What's up, guys? Welcome back. I am here with Ashley Rogers. She has decided to come and join us one more time and teach us another lesson on the SharePoint HTTP connector. Welcome back, Ashley. Hey, thanks for having me back. My pleasure, my pleasure. So we have had great response to part one of this video series. And so wanted to bring you back to take us to the next step to show us what that next evolution of learning about this connector was. And I just wanna say, uh, if you all haven't seen Ashley's first video, go down in the description and start there. Uh, her teaching style is amazing. She lays some foundational information down that you'll probably want for this lesson. Uh, but yes, go do that, go, go right now. Okay, all right, now that we got that out of the way, Ashley, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to you. Why don't you tell everybody quickly about who you are and then go ahead and jump in. So, hey everybody, um, I'm Ashley Rogers, and if you have seen a couple of these videos, you'll know me already as um, a SharePoint consultant and developer. Uh, I do a lot of speaking at SharePoint Saturdays, and I keep up with a blog, um, and you can follow me. There's my Twitter handle, Ashley K. Hillier, and you can also follow my blog at spinbetween.blogspot.com. I talk about lots of good stuff, everything from PowerShell to Power Automate, everything in between. Awesome. Ashley, would you minimize that second version of me there? They don't need to see two of me. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. Sure. All right. So let's go into a quick recap from the last time. So um, like John said, if you haven't watched the first video, definitely go do that. Um, it's got some foundational knowledge. Um, it's got some stuff in there that we need to talk about. But if you have watched it, maybe it's been a little while. Um, let's go ahead and just do, like I said, a quick recap here. Our data source obviously is SharePoint because what we're using is the HTTP to SharePoint connector. Um, as John said, that is the only free HTTP connector that there is. Um, and you yes. get that because uh, you're working with SharePoint, which is inside of Office 365. So really good way to, to get around that. Yep. Um, so last time, as I said, we talked about uh, HTTP GET. What we did in the last video was uh, we looked at a list and we got back the items. Pretty standard, pretty simple. You can go ahead and do this um, just by doing a um, GET ITEMS uh, from the SharePoint connector. But when we want to use this with the HTTP to SharePoint connector, there's a couple of gotchas. So we went over that took a peek at it, got some data back. Um, and today we're going to take that to the next level and talk about HTTP POST. So the POST method is going to help us send data back to SharePoint. We're going to talk to SharePoint in a way that it understands, in a way that is repeatable. Um, and then we'll just take you through that the same way as we did last time with a couple of examples. Awesome. Fairly easy. Get is means it comes to me, right? I get something just like mm -hmm. I get anything else. And post, you know, you make a post. You make your, you're giving something. You're giving some words. You're giving some data. It's exactly. easy. Love it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So then the last part here is that if we are talking about talking to SharePoint using HTTP, we're talking about its RESTful endpoint. And if this seems a little crazy to you, maybe you don't really have a lot of experience with REST and, and maybe SharePoint 2013 and all that good stuff, really just think about this as talking to a URL. All of what you're going to do is structured in a URL format. So if you can read a URL and understand what's coming back, you can send that request over to SharePoint. Yep. If you're familiar with this channel at all, we've talked a lot about APIs and RESTful is just one of the ways to talk to an API. Exactly. Exactly. So let's break this down. I did this in the last video, but just for a refresher, let's take a quick second here to talk about what um, this endpoint and the URL actually looks like. So this first piece is never going to change. This is your tenant um, in SharePoint. So, you know, where it says tenant, it would say, you know, uh, northwindtraders.sharepoint.com, whatever it is that your tenant name is, um, this piece is not going to change. And then the second piece, the same thing. This is just indicating to SharePoint that, hey, I want to talk to the rest, RESTful endpoint. I want to talk to that API. So again, this second piece, not going to change. It's this last section here that we really care about. This is the part that we talked about in the get video. Um, and really, you just have to remember this pattern. So it's lists, forward slash get by title. And then the title of your list goes inside single quotes. And then we do a forward slash items to make sure that we're talking to the items and not just getting back information about the list itself. This is great. I love that you broke this down. That's super helpful. Yeah, awesome. 
OK, so now that we're talking about the post method, let's just go over a few um, things here that we need to know what we're doing. So post creates items. We're taking metadata and we're sending that over to SharePoint and we're specifying what those things are going to be. So when you are creating these items, you've got to specify everything that's going to that's going to be inside of that item. So if you if you include a title, that's the title that's going to show up in the item. But if you don't include any other metadata, it's not going to be able to infer anything else. It's, it's just going to be empty for those. So anytime you want to specify metadata, you're going to have to break that down for SharePoint and actually list that out and then send that over. Cool. And to do that, we're going to utilize a new field inside the SharePoint, the HTTP to SharePoint action, and that's the body field. And it's probably something that you've ignored if you've just done a get, uh, and that's cool, that's fine, but we're going to need to learn about that to do post and then for the next time to do patch. So okay. that's what we're going to be looking at. Ooh, a next one. Look at you. Uh, you guys heard it. You heard it. <laughs> So when we talk about what goes inside the body field, uh, it's pretty simple, can look scary because it's got curly braces, but it's actually really straightforward. Um, this is going to be in a key value format. And what we do is we, we specify the field name, that's the key, and that's always going to be inside double quotes. And then what we want to put is the field value that we're specifying. So for this example, we would say this title is going to be my new item one. And those that value, my new item one, is going to be in double quotes because the type of title, that is a string. So we want to put it inside of quotes. If, for instance, I was specifying a number, um, then it would not be in quotes. You know, So the okay. number field name would be in quotes on the left side, but on the right side, the number value itself would not be in quotes. So just a gotcha. Cool. I like that. OK, so let's do this. Let's, let's go through this. some examples. Yeah. The good All right. <laughs> yeah, this is the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. So if you have seen a couple of the videos that I've done, um, you'll be familiar with my beast of a list Super here. I list. have this flow testing list. Yeah. yeah. So I always recommend every time go ahead and make yourself a list that includes um, one of every type of field that you can bring back into SharePoint because this helps you just quickly spin up examples. Anytime you've got to try something, anytime I'm teaching somebody something, I always refer to my, you know, crazy big flow testing list. I have one now. I made one too. That's awesome. It was a great, it was a great idea. <laughs> Fantastic. Cool. So what we've got in here, um, just I'm just showing a few of the fields here just so that we can have an example. We've got four items and then we've got colors and then we've got people pickers in them. So I'm going to go ahead and bring you over to Power Automate. And I already have um, a flow set up and it's just a manual trigger so that we can we can run this, you know, anytime for our testing purposes. And what I've done is I've opened up and created the send an HTTP request to SharePoint. So you're going to use the exact same action for whatever method it is that you're using. So if you use this drop down here in the method field, yep. you can see that you're going to use get and put and post and patch and all that good stuff, but it's the same action. So you know where to find it, same one every time, just specify the method is different. Yep. So in the site address, we're just picking our site, same thing as usual. And you'll yeah. notice that this is the, the tenant piece of the URL that I showed you before. So it's my yep. tenant name.sharepoint.com. So pretty simple. Yep. I'm most saying, of the time, I was, I'm sorry, uh, most of the time that will that will populate most of the time. Once in a while, when you do that drop down for site address, it'll show up empty. What you can do is you can actually click uh, enter custom value there and you can paste in any one of your SharePoint sites. Yeah, right there at the bottom. So if flow is being finicky that day, I just don't want you to be blocked. Just know that you can paste in any URL for the team part of it there uh, and, and just paste it in. But you got to make sure you click that enter custom value first because flow won't accept a pasted value without clicking that. That's right. Yep. And I have run, I actually ran into that this week. <laughs> <laughs> see, fun. see, exactly helpful. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got our site address specified, which is that first part of the URL, and then we're specifying our method, which of course today is post. And then the rest of this, the rest of the URL is in the URI section. Um, so this is actually everything there that we specified that second piece that is yeah. underscore API. 
as well as making sure that we've got our flow testing list that we're specifying. Um, so what we're going to do next is pop in a couple headers, um, and this is the same as before. This is accept application JSON, OData verbose, side note, um, because this is not for production use, we don't need to specify that OData is no metadata. So there's a couple of people out there who I know will, will get me on that one for still using verbose, but we do need to talk back and forth uh, to SharePoint and get all the metadata back. So okay. this is what I would suggest using if you're doing testing like this. Cool. So the fun part is putting into the body here. Uh, this is what I showed you on the slide before. It's just a simple um, specifying the title is my new item one. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, and then we're going to look at a couple other uh, quick examples. We're just going to build on this afterwards. Cool. So let's go ahead and save, and then we'll just I'll perform the trigger action. You know what I love? I've noticed that you as a regular flow builder, you do the double save. And it's funny because <laughs> I also do the double save. And I notice that anybody who's like a very regular flow builder, we all do the double save. <laughs> <laughs> I, I it's, it's because it's because yeah. the site trained us that way. Remember, it would be like, oh, are you sure you want to navigate away? And then we all saved again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 100%. sorry, go ahead. No, I was yeah. actually going to say it's because I've been burned too many times. Yes, <laughs> so it just exactly. Me. Yes. Exactly. So let's go back over here to the flow testing list, and you can see that my new item one um, popped up there. So oh. all I so all I specified was the title, um, and I didn't have to refresh or anything, right? Because modern SharePoint, it's got that sort of responsiveness that's happening. So when there's a new item there, it automatically pulls it back for me. I didn't have to refresh the page. Um, so I specified just the title, but I'd like to point out that SharePoint's going to give this item an ID itself. So it's going to handle that. You don't actually have to specify the ID or anything like that. It's just going to be part of what happens um, on the back end when you do a post. So, so that does populate there for you. Um, but nothing else, right? So we have no color and we have no people picker um, or anything like that. So we got to come back over here. And let's go ahead and do something else. So since we're not updating, because that's not today, right? So we're just posting. I'm just going to do a my new item too, uh, so that it has a different title and we can see what's there. So to build onto this, I'm just going to do a comma, and then I'm going to put in color in double quotes because that's the field name, okay. and then I'm going to put in pink. So I'll make it a pink color. So color is also a string field, right? So I put it in the double quotes. Let's just okay. save. And then test. See, now you got self-conscious, no double save. I did, I know, and I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was going to say it and save again. <laughs> there it is. So now we've got my new item two with pink. So as you can see, that if I send that back over, um, it's easy. It picks it up. Um, so then it just populates that uh, with with pink. So one more example. I'm actually going to use. I'm actually going to populate that people picker, and it's easier than you think it is. Um, if you have any experience working with people pickers in SharePoint in the past, it is ghastly. It is so hard because it's one of those combo fields where you have a display name. The, What's that? Normal, even working with it in like the normal connector, I think it's like yeah. <laughs> it's still very, very difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because it's got all those like um uh, the uh, sub attributes, right? So it's got the display name, the ID, and all that good stuff. So yeah. there's a lot it's, to handle. It's definitely one of the biggest complaints I think we still get is like, when are we going to get better options for people picker? Well, so this, surprisingly, is super simple. Okay. So um, all you have to do is, is know, once you know that what you're looking to do is set the ID, um, all you have to put in here is people picker. So I did this, my field is called people picker single, but what so, I'm trying to do is set the internal field single ID, right? So I'm just setting the ID and I'm setting it to six because I know that's my ID. Um, and to get into that, there's a way you can figure that out, but I do know that my ID uh, for my username is six. So go ahead and save. So do we have a, maybe we can find some links about that on how they can find their ID. Yeah, absolutely. So I, the last piece, I'll show you, I'll show you that real quick. Um, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and test this and run it. Cool. 
Okay, cool. So there you go. So um, yeah. it knew, SharePoint knew automatically that when I specified that internal field, people pick or single ID, that what I was referring to uh, was myself, was, was the Ashley Rogers account. So you can see that building up on, you know, um, sending the metadata over to SharePoint, it really just, um, it's pretty simple. All you need to yeah. do is know field name is and then know the type and then you can specify the metadata so it's pretty simple i love it and it becomes yeah. so cool because like now if if ashley wanted like in that body area she could put some of the dynamic inputs from from some of her previous steps in right and that that data could come from forms that data could come from power apps that data could come from all over the place and and you can very simply create a little schema that just regularly moves that data into sharepoint for you exactly. and uh, yeah, this is yeah. rad. This was really cool. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, and it's, it's amazing because the possibilities are is endless, you know, with this type of thing. So I just want to show you guys, since John was referring to, you know, where can I find that? Um, I did want to pull up the example that we did from the last video, which was my HTTP GET. Yep. I've got a successful run open here. Um, and what I want to do is show you that in the um, GET request to SharePoint, mm -hmm. if you head down here to the body, you're going to get all this really good stuff that came back from doing a get to the items. Mm. And if I find some of this stuff here, we'll have to go through and go through. But you'll see that here it is, people pick picker single ID. And I could okay. go back and look and see that where does this match? Where does the title match? Who is that person that's there? So there's a lot of really good meaty information inside the body that comes back from the get. Um, and that will help you sort of inform what do I need to do to send over to, you know, via post to actually make this work. So that's a great place to start, too, is just using your own data and looking at the body from a get request. Perfect. So the link is go back to that video one link. <laughs> exactly. There you I go. I love it. Nice yeah. and easy. Awesome. Cool. All right. Right. Yeah, so so that's it. It's pretty straightforward once you get the, the pattern. Um, and the next thing that we're going to want to do is talk about actually updating these items. And what does that look like? Okay, and that's patch. That's patch. Awesome. Okay, well, Ashley, so I'm going to assume then we're going to see you back for another video. That's what I'm hoping. Excellent. Okay, uh, that it's a deal. Uh, we'll, cool. We will get that scheduled. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, guys, you know what to do. Go ahead. Check the description. I have links for Ashley down there so you can follow her on Twitter and on her blog and go and check out her previous video. And she has a couple videos on my channel now. If you appreciate her teaching style as much as I do, go check those out, too. All right. That's it, guys. Much love from me. Click like. Click subscribe. See you in the next <laughs> one.